Hello again, and thank you for joining us. I want to begin today by talking about Thrive 2050. The County Council is set to vote on Thrive next Tuesday. Thrive 2050 is the update to the general plan and will be the guide for land use for the county for the next 30 years. I am urging the County Council to disapprove Thrive and send it back to the Planning Board to do the research and the outreach that should have been done from the start. I want to talk a little bit about why I feel this way. Thrive has multiple varied problems and mistakes. This guide is too important. It needs to be done right. And there's no urgency to vote on it next week. Unfortunately, many of our public is either unaware of Thrive or has been misled by the planning board about what this plan will actually do. For example, I received emails from people asking me to support Thrive to bring down rent prices. Thrive 2050 doesn't have anything to do with bringing down rent prices. It has no solution to addressing rising rents Surpassing so it won't help the person who emailed me, nor does it contain anything that would increase the amount of affordable housing now or in the future. There is clearly confusion and misinformation about Thrive. While there are numerous problems with Thrive in its current form, I wanted to highlight the four biggest problems. First, the most glaring problem with Thrive is the insufficient attention given to equity issues. The planning board exempted themselves from a racial equity analysis from the start. A pretty odd move given their planning for the 2050 future of a diverse county with serious housing inequity issues. And while the council did eventually request a consultant to conduct a racial equity analysis of community involvement, the consultants reported that they did not have enough time to do a thorough review and they raised some serious concerns that cannot be addressed quickly. As one of the council's consultants told them, a compressed time frames are the enemy of equity. Thrive will guide future development and growth over the next 30 years. Let's take the time to do it right. Second, the Thrive 2050 plan and proponents have asserted that there must be countywide rezoning to accommodate future growth. This is actually wrong. Zoning is not the problem. Right now, today, in the development pipeline, there are 35,000 housing units that have already been approved by the planning board. And all the developer needs to do is get a building permit. There are no approval processes left. Add to that another 85,000 units that are part of our approved master plans within existing zoning. The vast majority are near transit. We've zoned for the housing we need and the question we need to ask is not gonna be answered by Thrive. It's why is the housing that we've zoned for not being built and what do we need to do to address our housing needs? Third, there are no concrete proposals in Thrive to approve affordability. The Thrive conversation included discussion about missing middle housing and attainable housing. Planning Board's own study in Silver Spring showed that missing middle housing would actually be more expensive than the existing housing and unaffordable to most people. Planning's definition of attainable housing is unsubsidized market housing that is appropriate and suitable for the households that live here. They even go on to say that the county needs to end its sole focus on affordable housing which is a gross misstatement of our affordable housing policies. Sadly, this county has never had a sole focus on affordable housing. That statement is an insult to the approximately 50,000 households who are here today and who are burdened by housing costs. When developments are approved, we ask for 12 and a half to 15% of the units to be affordable to people with incomes around 60 to $75,000. Nothing for lower income families, of which there are many, Nothing for households making more than 75K, but not enough to afford the new market rate units being built. My fourth issue with Thrive and why the council should not pass it next week is pretty simple. The community was not engaged in this process. Doing charrettes or Zoom meetings is not the same as engagement. Thrive 2050 creators and proponents departed from the long-standing, well-respected process of deeply engaging our residents. Years ago, they were called citizen committees. When residents took the time to work with professional planners and elected officials to develop the long-term plans, the master plans that sit in most of the county today. I myself sat on the sector planning committee for Silver Spring, a broadly representative group. This time, the planning staff told the community members why they should like Thrive, rather than working with the community to develop a general plan together, to gather their input, to make sure that they understood what was being planned, and to understand whether this is something the residents thought was necessary or appropriate. None of that happened. 
If you share my concerns, please contact your county council representatives and ask them to vote no on Thrive 2050. This plan has problems that need to be fixed now. It doesn't have to be passed this quickly. It can and should be sent back to the planning board. This week, Montgomery College inaugurated Dr. Jermaine Williams as their 11th president. If we are going to create a more equitable Montgomery County, it needs to be rooted in education. In Dr. Williams, Montgomery College has found the right person to take this already incredible institution, currently ranked seventh best community college in this nation, and make it even greater. Dr. Williams comes to us after leading Nassau Community College in New York, a very diverse community like her own. He's well known in academic circles as a leader who's focused on the historically underrepresented and marginalized groups and approaches each student's education holistically. Dr. Williams' history of addressing social inequities for the historically underrepresented groups of college students is one aspect that makes him a good fit in Montgomery County. I'm extremely enthusiastic about our collaboration with Dr. Williams and his team to expand the reach of Montgomery College to the East County, an idea long overdue and critical to our equity efforts. Montgomery College is critical to our county's education and economic development efforts. We wish Dr. Williams good luck I look forward to our partnerships to provide more programs, facilities, and career opportunities to students of all ages and residents throughout every community in our county. This Saturday, Montgomery County will be looking for more people to join the ranks of the police, fire and rescue, and Department of Corrections. The Sheriff's Office is also using Saturday's Public Safety Careers Fair as a way to get more people interested in public safety careers. The fair will be divided into a pair of two-hour sessions, starting at 9 a.m. and 1 p.m., respectively. During these sessions, participants will hear from women about the job, about leadership opportunities within each job, and other Montgomery County employment benefits. This is a tough time for demanding jobs like law enforcement. Nationwide, there's been a drain on staffing, as people have retired and burned out, and that is set in because of staff shortages and other factors. In Montgomery County, we've raised pay for police and established these career fairs to make it easy to learn about the job and apply for these positions through a one-stop shop event. If you're interested in serving the public and helping out when you're needed the most, I invite you to come out to the Montgomery County Public Safety Training Academy in Gaithersburg this Saturday to learn more. So let's turn now to the COVID-19 update. Hospitalizations have risen slightly and our new case rate seems to be leveling out now rather than continuing to drop. Still, our community level threat remains low. One possible explanation is our new variants that are now being identified out of the Omicron strain. At least 10 now have been identified, making up just over 15% of the new cases reported. This week, Dr. Anthony Fauci noted his concern with some of the abilities of these variants to evade antibodies being taken for treatment. The good news is that the bivalent booster shots are still showing effective results. Remember, the vaccines were approved and made before going through human trials, which is typically a final step considered by regulators. Now that scientists are able to evaluate the additional shot in humans, they're seeing a significant boost in the immune system from the shots. Anything that can knock down the number of people getting severely ill hospitalized or dying from COVID is something we should aggressively be pursuing. And we're finally seeing demand for the bivalent boosters to begin to rise significantly. But it needs to rise more because we're entering the season where the conditions for a more rapid spread of the virus will be created. The latest state health department numbers show Montgomery County continues to have among the highest vaccination and booster rates, even among children five and up who are now eligible for their boosters. Still, there are tens of thousands of kids and adults eligible for boosters that haven't gotten them yet. I encourage you to seek out vaccination options. There are many. Montgomery County continues to offer school-based clinics on a weekly basis, and we have our third Boosterama scheduled for the last Saturday in October at the Wheaton Westfield Mall from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. I want to thank Westfield for teaming with us once again as well as raffling off $50 gift cards to those who get boosted at our event. Our Boosterama events are a convenient and easy way for us to bring shots directly to the community. We'll be going on to promote this a lot and hope you'll be able to join us as well. Health experts are encouraging everyone to get their flu shot and bivalent booster at the same time if possible. The recommendation comes ahead of flu season 
and should be done before people are attending large family gatherings that traditionally come during this holiday season. The CDC issued a report last week noting that the flu and similar illnesses are notably high next door in the District of Columbia, which is likely to impact us. Typically, flu season ramps up in December, so this is a little bit early. The CDC noted specific concerns about a strain called H3N2. These reports are concerning, and it's a very good reason why getting the flu shot is as important as getting the new bivalent booster. Monkeypox cases continue to climb slowly across Maryland, now tallying about 700 cases across the state and around 27,000 cases nationwide. There have been no new cases reported in Montgomery County since last week. We've put more shots in arms than anywhere in Maryland. We continue to be proactive using our pre-registration list to administer around 30 preventative vaccines every day. I'm proud of our efforts and I'm glad to see the case rate slowing down. This weekend is one of the most beautiful on the calendar with the leaves changing across Montgomery County. Luckily, there are many ways to take in the beauty of autumn. Please stay up to date on all the county's fall events and attractions at the visitmontgomery.com website and the app there. This Saturday, I'll be attending the 40th year of the Potomac Day celebration. It's great news that this community celebration returned this year with a parade through Potomac Village. Potomac Day starts at 10 a.m. and runs through 3 in the afternoon. And please join me at 8 a.m. on Sunday morning in Silver Spring at Veterans Plaza for the Humanitarian Walk in Silence, hosted by the Montgomery County Sister Cities Organization. This one-hour event is a great way to start your Sunday morning and is intended to highlight the need for humanity to come together as one and promote peace across this planet. I'm appreciative of the Montgomery Sister Cities for organizing this event and their services to our county. Sister Cities connect our county and residents and our students and businesses to communities all over the world, fostering friendship, partnership, and mutual cooperation. To learn more about Sister Cities, go to MontgomerySisterCities.org for more information. I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you again next week.